Hey guys, it's the Unsmooth Criminal, and I'm back to my old setup with my phone recording everything. So, sorry about the background noise, my neighbor's doing yard work. So, let's get into this. This is going to be, what if Deku was a pilot? And you're probably thinking, oh, Titanfall, or a military one. No, she's still going to be a hero. But the heroes are not named heroes. They're called hunters in this one. Yes, I'm going off a little bit of a hunter-hunter uh, kind of aesthetic. But he's a pilot. Yes, it's going to be he, but he looks like a she. You guys have seen the show, I think it's Robots and Magic. Or Knights and Magic. But I think it's Robots Magic. With Ernest the Echevalier. <laughs> Comes from a distinguished noble line of the Echevaliers. And in this, there are some forces in the universe that people still don't understand. Like where the hell these weird monsters are coming from that attack the city at random points in time. So, they made the Hunter Association. Hunter, Hunter, kind of. To fight back on these monsters. Remember, none, none of the stories that I am referencing, like Hunter Hunter, uh, Robots and Magic, or Magic and Robots, whatever the name is, and MHA are owned by me. Not owned. And these pictures are supplied by one of the people in my Discord. So if you want the pictures or want to know where they came from, you can go and talk to her. I'll hopefully remember to put a link in the for the Discord in the description. So we go to an Ernesty is six. There are still quirks in this timeline, and no one knows how quirks came along. They just know quirks are exist. And Ernesty is considered quirkless. Because he doesn't have a quirk that gives him strength, speed, another appendage, or some kind of ability. No, he has a quirk that gives him intelligence. <clears throat> so no one can properly calculate his intelligence. And he's going up through the ranks in school really quickly. And he's told at the age of 13 that he can choose whatever school he wants to go to. And he chooses UA. The Hunter's School. And they're like, what, what do you mean? Um, and he's like, I want to make a support gear for the Hunters. And they go, oh, okay. Uh, anything else? And he goes, nope. That's all I want to do is make support gear and maybe... Or every once in a while, go out into the battlefield and help. And they go, uh... <laughs> um, yeah, that may be a long shot. And he goes, I already have a design to do it. And they go, what? And he goes, yeah. And I will be referencing the 40k universe. I do not own anything from the 40k universe. So, yeah, at this point in time, Ernesty has met two friends, one name, and this is female, Kasuki Bakugo, and the other one is Ijiro Kirishima. They, they basically been family because Kirishima's parents died, and Kasuki... His mother adopted Kirishima after his parents died. So they basically been in family as long as they can remember. And one day, Ernesty was testing some uh, stuff. And he 
accidentally shot something towards Kasuki. And Kirishima saw this, so he blocked the projectile. And Ernesty ran over and said, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to shoot towards you. And they asked, what the hell are you doing? And Kirishima's getting really pissed off because, well... His adoptive sister almost got her head blown off by a random projectile from this little kid. Because this little kid is two years younger than them. They are 15. Ernesty is 12 or 13. Yeah, 13. And Ernesty says, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to... Almost blow your head off. And he bows and apologizes profusely. And says that your quirk is really cool. Can I do some tests on it to see if I could uh, put it in a um, robot? And Kirishima's like, what do you mean? And he goes, well, those monsters, I have found a crystal in one of them after they died. I kind of pulled it apart went through it, found a crystal, and it looks like I can put quirks in these crystals to uh, give inanimate objects quirks. And he goes, what? And he goes, yeah, let me show you. And he pulls out a, uh, a little knife, and he says this was made from a tiny crystal with a light manipulation quirk and he clicks a button and the blade is just appears out of nowhere and Kirishima's like what and he goes yeah and the entire time Kasuki's just been staring at Ernesty questioning both her sexuality and what gender Ernesty is <laughs> Because <laughs> Ernesty does look like a female, as you can see in the picture. That, that is basically what Ernesty looks like, but not in a seductive position. And Ernesty's talking like a guy. So she's completely confused, and she finally butts into the conversation. How old are you? And Ernesty goes, Oh, 13. And he goes, Oh, I need your guys' help. And they go, what? And he goes, yes. Um, I need your help doing something. And I'll be right back. I gotta do something real quick. And after like 10, 20 minutes, Ernesty finally comes out in a little exoskeleton. And a thing is walking behind him. And he says to Kasuki... Can you help me with testing this design? And she goes, sure, what is it? And he goes, well, this design feeds off bioelectricity from your own body. And if you move it strangely, it will affect your body negatively. And they go, what do you mean strangely? And he goes, if you try to do anything that your body can't do, then you're going to hurt for a really long time after. And she goes, okay. So what is it supposed to do? And he goes, it's supposed to increase the power of your quirk. And she goes, what? And he goes, yeah. So there's a untuned crystal in there that is tuned to whoever's quirk or whoever touches it with a quirk active. And she pops an explosion in her hands and goes, so I can make explosions like this. And he goes, yes. And then we'll use the same basically same principles as your quirk. So she walks up and she starts popping explosions on the crystal. The crystal memorizes the explosions and how it works. And she gets into the contraption and I'll pull it up now. Without all the decorations, but basically this. <laughs> and she starts moving around. She starts jumping high. She starts running fast. And 
after she's done, Ernest, Ernesty has to turn the suit off from a distance and say that you're done anymore and you'll feel the effects for countless days after. And she goes, how do you know this? And he goes, well, I got another one. I got a small and a big one. And they go, what do you mean a small and big one? And he goes, well, I got a small one for when I fight smaller monsters and I got a bigger one for when I fight bigger monsters. And he runs into the warehouse again. Or not warehouse, the garage, basically. This is a massive compound that he's living at. And they just walked by, and that's when they were met. He runs in, and he gets a suit for himself. I do not know where this picture originates, but yes, this is the picture. And he comes out and says, I have... 13 quirks in this single one, and the quirks can only do a certain amount. Five of the quirks are meant only for the propulsion, and the rest are just meant for powering and giving an, an edge to the wielder. And then I have this, and he pulls the he stick from behind his back, and he lights it off. And it looks like a battle axe, like you see in the picture. And... <laughs> They, they go, whoa, and he goes, yeah, sadly, I'm not fully grown into this yet. And yes, Ernesty was a preemie, like in Robots and Magic. So yes, Ernesty is very small, he very schmool. And someone's been spying on him. And this little character is known as the greatest mind of this century. No, it's not Nezu. So he goes to the Hunters Association and talks to Nezu. Nezu is a human, full-size human that can turn into any kind of monster. That had a crystal in it. He can turn into any kind of the monsters. And he's still intelligent because he does have the intelligence of the monsters and it adds on top of his. So he constantly keeps getting intelligence every time he either eats part of a monster or he touches a crystal from the monster. And so, yes, the crystal gets absorbed into him. So... <laughs> Power Loader, the one that was spying, runs up to Nezu and says, um, apparently there's a 13-year-old joining UA, and they have this. And he shows a picture to Nezu. And Nezu goes, um, what? And he goes, yeah, apparently this little man, and he's saying that it's really freaking cool what he's done, and Nezu's getting scared. And he goes, yeah, this little man has found out the secret to quirks. And he goes, whoa, 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 what do you mean he's found out the secrets? And he goes, well, he found out that quirks can be copied by the gems. And that he can install gems into uh, suits of armor to increase the output of a quirk. And he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Only you and I know that gems are the secret to quirks. I don't think he knows that yet. I think he's just testing the copy abilities of the gems. And he goes, maybe. We'll have to see when he get, joins UA. And he goes, what do you mean joins UA? And he goes, I was listening to the conversation, and there's three students that are going to be very useful and going to be needing a lot of support from us. So we need to keep an eye on them. And it's those three that you see in the picture. I don't know those two names, but I know his name. His name is Ernesty Estevalier. And he goes, oh, God damn it. I knew you'd be coming this year. So we skip to the entrance exams of UA. And it's not in the normal entrance exams. 
it's they go into a forest for a week and they have to bring back as many crystals as possible. Yes, people die in this entrance exam. But Ernest C. was allowed to bring one suit of armor. Because he doesn't have a quirk for the, the offensive. He has a mind, uh, mental quirk. And he's considered quirkless to most people. So, he was allowed to bring one piece of armor. And he met this turtle. Yes, I'm going to bring the turtle into here. He saw this turtle and he saw that his weapons are doing nothing to it. So he's like, okay, this is going to be fun. And by this time, he's upgraded his suit of armor a little bit. So now he's running around as fast as possible. And he knows that he can only keep that up, that speed and power up for 30 minutes. And it's already been 29 minutes of him trying to hurt the creature so he flies straight at the creature's face because he does have the jet propulsion and he uses the little knife that he has on him at all times and it hits it in the eye and he adds the energy from the suit he's basically wearing to increase the power output of the knife and stab it through the brain which kills it immediately like it frying the brain of that one behemoth in uh, Robots vs. Knights. And he saw how big the crystal was. And he's like, cool. So he took the next few days to carve the crystal out of the creature. And he only brings one crystal back. And he's confused at why all of his crystals are just disappearing. And then he walks up towards this crystal. And he looks inside of it. And he sees the rest of the crystals inside this crystal. And he goes, okay, that's strange. So he just put it in a bag and walked back. And before he turned in his crystals, he went straight to the support course, the support course teacher, power loader, and says, I have a little issue. And he goes, what is it? And he goes, well, all of my crystals are gone. And he goes, what do you mean? And he goes, well, I defeated it. Uh, I forget what class it was called, but I defeated a high-ranking beast, and I got this. And he throws it down on the ground, and the crystal just ups on the ground, and it just sits there. And he's like, um, what? And he goes, yeah, I defeated this, and, uh, <laughs> um, I, I can't get my crystals out. And he goes, what do you mean? He goes, well, this crystal has the rest of my crystals inside of it. And <sighs> Power Loader presses a button underneath his desk without Ernest C. seeing. And five seconds later, Nezu walks in saying, well, time for you to learn. And Ernest is like, what? And <sighs> I'm going to end it there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, hopefully this comes out before noon at my place. It's 10, 12 when I record this. So if this comes out before noon at my place, I'm going to be streaming at noon. Um, PST, Pacific Standard Time. And 3 EST, Eastern Standard Time. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Talk to you guys later.